to Providence, Rhode Island. The Civic Center is sold out, and this is the 1994 edition of the WWF Royal Rumble. I'm Jim Ross, everyone, alongside Gorilla Monsoon. And Gorilla, this is the sixth Royal Rumble on pay-per-view for the WWF. And by all accounts, it's going to be the greatest of all time. It is hot indeed. It is electric here in the Providence Civic Center. And why? Because every title is up for grabs here in the World Wrestling Federation. And besides that, the winner of the Royal Rumble itself will get an opportunity at WrestleMania 10 to meet whomever is the WWF champion in Madison Square Garden. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tatanka tonight will take on Bam Bam Bigelow. Ludwig Borger has been injured. The 1 2 3 kid is also out. Uh, the WWF Royal Rumble matchup itself, as Gorilla Monsoon said, every championship on the line, plus the all important 30 man over the top rope Royal Rumble. We're happy you're here with us on this great radio station. We will be back. The Royal Rumble continues. You're listening to Radio WWF. Now, bring all the excitement of the World Wrestling Federation to your home with Hasbro's all-new superstar lineup of realistic action figures. Elect Macho Man Randy Savage, The Undertaker, Razor Ramon, Tatanka, and the evil Papa Shango. There's 20 in all, each with his own powerful wrestling moves. And for real wrestling action, you need the official WWF ring with spring action ropes and championship belt. With Hasbro's new WWF collection, you make the moves and you decide who rules. With WWF figures, you're always a winner. And we are back here, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Ross and Gorilla Monsoon, back here with you at the WWF Royal Rumble. Tatanka has already been introduced, and here comes his opponent for the evening, the beast from the east, Bam Bam Bigelow. And, of course, Gorilla Monsoon, wherever Bam Bam Bigelow travels, so does his main squeeze, the ever-lovely folks, Luna Bashan. The lunatic. Bam Bam, as big as ever. Well over that 400-pound mark, perhaps hovering near five. Got a Luna is all decked out in red, and of course, Bam Bam's tights have red in them as well. And did you notice, Jim Ross, that the Native American Tataka has a new headdress? A very uh, spectacular-looking headdress worn to the ring by Tataka, the Native uh, Lumbee Indian from North Carolina, was scheduled to meet Ludwig Borga. And this one's getting underway, ladies and gentlemen. There's the bell. The talk is starting out very quickly, hammering away at Bam Bam Bigelow. But Bigelow fights back. And Bigelow with a drop kick. That's a 400-pound man drop kicking. And the talk landed back in the corner. Well, Bam Bam tried a little sneak attack there. It didn't work. But now he sort of mounted some kind of an attack. Whoa. Irresistible force just met the immovable object. Drop kick by the Native American who's scheduled for double duty here. Crossbody crash by Tataka and a near fall. Referee Danny Davis got a one count. Arm drag takeover by Tataka. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, both Tataka and Bam Bam Bigelow will be competing later here tonight in the uh, 30 man WWF Royal Rumble match itself. We're about to say that Ludwig Borga was the scheduled opponent of Tataka, but unfortunately, Mr. Borga has sustained. A, an ankle injury and will be out for an undetermined length of time. Bam Bam Bigelow has stepped in and stepped in gladly. Tonka with the war paint, black and white war paint on his face uh, for the first time. We've seen that. He comes off the ropes. Bigelow lowered his head and it was Tonka with the DDT taking Bigelow down. And now Tonka is going up to the top rope. Tonka on the top rope comes off cross body, but he missed. Bam Bam was waiting for him, set him up for that move. The Tonka went down and went down hard. Both guys in trouble right now. We're going to have a little gut check right here. Well, Bam Bam Bigelow is going to want to slow this thing down, use his size advantage. And right now, Bigelow stomps away at the Tonka's head. Luna Vashani is at ringside, as we mentioned, ladies and gentlemen. Bigelow up, slow, reaching down, grabbing a handful of hair. Picking Tatanka up and pushing Tatanka back in the corner where Bigelow delivers a huge forearm. And now it's the Irish whip on the far side. Oh. Right into the turnbuckle. And then Tatanka was just engulfed by Bam Bam Bigelow. Knocked the wind right out of the Native American. Tatanka in a lot of trouble early on in this match. He's struggling in the corner. Bam Bam right on top of him. Bam Bam Bigelow, a former bounty hunter from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Comes to the corner to get the top. The top caught him 
with a foot in the face, down to both knees goes Bigelow, and up once again goes to Tonka. We'll see if this time it'll pay off. The Tonka up and over. Got Bigelow to send set trip. Bigelow almost, almost down. He's trying to hold his balance, and he, he poured his posterior right in the chest of the Tonka. All 400 pounds right on Tonka's chest cavity. Sat right on his sternum. Native American Tonka in a lot of trouble once again in this matchup. Headbutt by Bigelow, and Bigelow now has uh, regained the offensive advantage here. Tatanka lying on the canvas. Bigelow stomping away at his sternum and his chest. You know, Jim Ross, the Native American Tatanka would have loved to have had an early victory in this one. Maybe a couple of minutes into the match, he wants to save himself with a big Royal Rumble. Would love to be the first Native American ever to become WWF champion. Indeed he would. As Tatanka back up to his vertical base, he was a couple of chops there, but Bigelow caught him in the standing rock kick. And now Bigelow goes for the lateral press. He's going for the cover. Bigelow's got two, and that's all this time. Shot out of there and shot out of there in a hurry. In the meantime, around ringside, the lunatic screaming at her man. I, I hope she is not the Lorena Bobbitt of the WWF. Oh, boy. I think we've heard enough about uh, the Bobbitt situation, and that'll be the last reference from yours truly on that tonight. Tonka grabbing a rope, trying to pull himself up. I'll tell you something, Gorilla. He's, he's let this match get slowed down, and that's right down Bigelow's alley. Well, Big- it certainly is. Bear hook now by the big guy, squeezing for all he's worth. Native American high in the air. Now the big guy from Asbury Park burying his head right into the abdomen, getting the full advantage out of this big bear. Bigelow with a bear hug. Still to come on this broadcast, on this great radio station. You're going to hear the Intercontinental Championship decided, the WWF Tag Team title decided, the WWF title decided, plus the Royal Rumble in its entirety. We are so glad you're with us. Wherever you are, ladies and gentlemen, whether it be on K-Fan in Minneapolis, perhaps on KSAC in Sacramento, or great friends in Albuquerque, New Mexico, KDEFAM or KUCUFM, three of the great stations among many that are carrying this broadcast live tonight. We're all over. All over the place here this, on this one. That's for sure. Bigelow continues to hold on with that bear hug. And Gorilla, I would think in your career, you may have used this move a time or two yourself. Very, very effective hold used primarily to enable your opponent to get any oxygen into his chest cavity. Consequently, when that happens, it doesn't take much for the lights to go out. And if Tatanka wants to be successful in this one, he's got to find a way out. Certainly uh, prevents your lungs from fully expanding. Just taking short breaths of air. And that's tough for a big athlete. A 250-pounder the size of Tatanka. But in this one, Tatanka's giving away, ladies and gentlemen, approximately 150 pounds in this match. Boy, it is electric here in the Providence Civic Center. You could cut the electricity for the night. Tatanka fights free. Goes to the ropes. Came off the shoulder block. And Bigelow planted him with a shoulder of his own. Bigelow now measures Tatanka with another shoulder block. Ran him over just like a freight train. Bigelow very methodical here tonight. And he came up again. And this time he was power slammed. What a move. And a ladder press. And a long two. Oh. Was that close? Great power slam by Tatanka, and I wonder what that took out of it. Both men, oh, both men with a mid-air collision. Both athletes went to the ropes, came off. Both men tried to execute a, a crossbody dress gorilla monsoon. Instead, they hit head to head. Bam, bam, first one back on his feet. This could be a golden opportunity in this match for him. Tatanka looks to be in deep trouble. Bam Bam Bigelow, the man with a tattooed skull. And Tatanka's head ran to the top turnbuckle. And here comes that war dance, reminiscent of the legendary Chief J. Strongbow. Boy, he's got the motor running now, and it's running at high speed. Bam Bam, still on him. Oh, and Bigelow caught him with a karate kick to the back of the head. Tatanka just stalled. And now Bigelow is uh, mocking that war dance, not very eloquently, and Tatanka being rolled over now on his back by Bam Bam. Bigelow has got this match in the bag. He has got it won here. He's not going for the cover, Gorilla. Maybe a mistake. Well, he's headed for the outside. He wants to go all the way up. He's climbed down the inside. 
All the way up to the top, Clay Buckner. It looks like a moonsault. Oh, he went for the moonsault at the top of the row, right to the corner. Avoiding the contact. Tatanka avoided the contact on that 400-pound moonsault, and Bigelow found nothing but him. Boy, he bailed out of there right at the last split second. Bought himself a little bit of time. The big guy appears to be hurt. Tatanka grabbing the rope, pulling himself up, trying to shake it loose. He's got to get all he's got right now, folks. Tatanka now goes outside. He climbs the ladder. Tatanka's on the top rope. They go back up to a vertical base. They go turn right into it. Tatanka caught him across body, and he has got it. Oh, he got it. Third time was the charm. Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Rumble will continue. Whatever you do, folks, don't go away. You're listening to Radio WWF. World Wrestling Federation fans are a special breed. Are you a true World Wrestling Federation fan? Not unless you've got your copy of WrestleMania, the album. Macho Man Randy Savage, Bret Hitman Hart, The Undertaker, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Mr. Perfect, The Big Boss Man. It's all the excitement and energy of the World Wrestling Federation superstars in one exciting package. WrestleMania, the album, brought to you by the World Wrestling Federation and the RCA Records label. Available now wherever cassettes and compact discs are sold. WrestleMania, the album. You're not a fan unless you've got your copy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live in the Providence, Rhode Island Civic Center. This is the 1994 edition of the WWF Royal Rumble, and we'll have more for you right after this 60-second break from your local station. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Ross and Gorilla Monsoon back with you here in the Providence, Rhode Island Civic Center. You're listening to the 1994 edition of the WWF Royal Rumble, and our next match, Gorilla, will be for the WWF Tag Team Championship. Uh, Owen and Brad Hart to meet the Quebecers, managed by Johnny Polo. Of course, uh, the Quebecers have had a, a pretty rough week or so, just a, a little over a week ago, that they lost the tag belts. They certainly did. Lost the tag belts to Marty Jannetty and the 1-2-3 Kid, and then all of a sudden, at Madison Square Garden, they got him back. But, for my money, Jim Ross, they could kiss, him about, kiss, kiss them goodbye right here tonight. Well, you know, Gorilla, this is a very emotional situation because... Right after the Survivor Series, uh, uh, Brett and Owen had a, a long string of well-documented problems, and uh, those problems have been uh, alleviated, and, and they've been solved more specifically. I really believe that the Hart brothers have got, I'm like you, I really believe they have an excellent chance in taking it all here tonight. Well, they've got the continuity. They know what each other's going to do at any given moment. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, both of them have superior wrestling abilities than either one of the Quebecers, but then again, Johnny Polo will be there. Could be a factor in the match, no doubt about it. And uh, we'll uh, talk more about this situation. This match is just around the corner. We're moments away from it, ladies and gentlemen. And the Royal Rumble will continue. You're listening to Radio WWF. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Ross and Gorilla Monsoon back with you here in the Providence, Rhode Island Civic Center. We are uh, still awaiting the uh, WWF Tag Team Championship matchup between Owen and Bret Hart as they challenge the champs, Johnny Polo's Quebecers, Jacques and Pierre, and Gorilla, this uh, crowd, certainly uh, as they are watching on the video wall uh, here in the arena as they prepare for this, certainly are pro hearts. Boy, they certainly are, and waiting with great anticipation for this match because they feel that history is going to be made right here tonight at the Royal Rumble in the Providence Civic Center, and I am in accord with this, you know? Well, they are uh, certainly a, an outstanding combination, and we're, it, it remains to be seen how well they will mesh uh, in this one. I'm sure a lot of thanks has to go to Papa Stewart for putting everything together, getting these two guys back together so that they can be coherent as a team. 
Well, Todd Pettengill is talking to uh, Owen and Brad. This has got to be absolutely back in the locker room area. Let's listen in. To say we're a little overconfident would be an understatement. Let me say one thing. Once Owen and I, and I'll say it right now, when we're the tag team champions after tonight, we're going to give the Steiners, one, two, three, keep kid, Marty Jannetty, they're all going to get a shot at the belts, because you're looking at the best in the aerial wrestling, and you're looking at the best at the technical wrestling. The water is under the bridge, and we are together. That's right, excellence of execution. Todd, this is the happiest day of my life, the greatest opportunity, the one that I've waited all my life for, and believe me, Brad, it all happened when the Quebecers, when they won those belts back, I knew that was our calling, that was our fate. This is our chance, Brad. I'm going to make you proud of you. I'm going to make you the WWF Tag Team Champion a third time. And I'm gonna bring that Brell home to you, Mom and Dad. Let's go do it, Brett. Tempest Absolutely, the Hart brothers, ladies and gentlemen, they are pumped, they are ready to go, and they are taking on the cocky Quebecers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you hear some comments uh, made uh, just back in the uh, locker room area with Owen and Brett Hart, with uh, Todd Pettengill, and uh, you can hear the music in the background. The Quebecers on their way to the ring. Let's go pick up Howard Finkel's ring introduction. the I.O with their manager, Johnny Polo, from the province of Quebec, at a total combined weight of 528 pounds, the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions, Jacques and Pierre, the Quebecers! What sorry representatives of the World Wrestling Federation this pair is, the sooner they get stripped of these titles, the better off everyone will be. Jock and Pierre won the titles for the first time on Monday, September 13th, versus the Steiner Brothers. That was on Monday Night Raw in the Manhattan Center with those uh, rather unusual province of Quebec rules. Well, a lot of people felt, Jim Ross and myself included, that they did not really lose the titles. Let's go back up to Howard Finkel, ladies and gentlemen. The opponents and challengers from Calgary, Alberta, Canada at a total combined weight of 461 pounds the Rocket Owen Hart Brett Pittman Hart the Hart Brothers it is Dufferin here in the Providence Civic Center a resounding standing ovation here for Brett the Hitman and Brother Owen this match Certainly one with, that has been met with a great deal of anticipation. Owen and Brett tending for the first time on pay-per-view. The challenge for the WWF Tag Titles. They're both dressed in pink and black. The Hitman's uh, colors. Of course, Brett has been a WWF Tag Champion on two occasions. Owen has yet to wear the gold here in the WWF. The Brett Hitman Hart Gorillas worn just about every piece of gold that the WWF has to offer. Well, he certainly has, including the WWF Championship itself, along with the Intercontinental title, co-holder on a number of occasions of the tag belts, but not one time has the Rocket Owen Hart had any gold around his waist, and this is his chance. As we said, these two men had a major problem with each other at the Survivor Series after Owen was eliminated. Unfortunately for them, those problems were were very, very public, and uh, but I'm very, very pleased to say, as we all know that have been following this situation, that that, situ that problem has been uh, solved. They are together. They are focused. This should be an outstanding tag team matchup. The Quebecers in their traditional uh, black uh, Mountie-like pants with the yellow stripes down the side, red uh, sleeveless shirts. Hideous. Polo is uh, natally attired, uh, to say the least. And it will be Brett the Hitman Hart and Pierre starting it out here for their respective teams. Pierre, no doubt, Gorilla, not only the biggest, but the strongest man in this tag team match. No question about it, but he's in there with the excellence of execution. The guy who was so technically sound that I don't know whether you can beat this guy or not. But I'll tell you what, he really showed me something not too long ago, Jim Ross, when he said he was devoting his entire career after finishing up on all his contractual single matches to tag team action, just he and his brother Owen. Bret Hart sending up Pierre to the ropes, caught him with a knee, coming off to the midsection, and makes a tag to the rocket. Owen Hart climbs the ladder from the outside, comes off the top of the double axe handle, right to the mid-back area, and then catches up Pierre with a wrist lock, and it's quickly reversed. Owen tries to reverse, Owen hits up, 
and reverses Pierre. Snap mares him over. Pierre to the ropes. Hard, oh. hard shoulder block, knocks down Owen. Goes far side, Owen drops down. Owen leaps off. And hit, head over, cross body. Owen hard, going for cover, pick up. Almost got him, boy, is Owen quick. He is on fire. Arm bar now applied by Owen Hart. Owen the Rocket comes by the name rightfully. A high flyer with a lot of chances. Tag made by Pierre, bringing in Jacques. Well, Jacques wanting to slow things down here. Both these teams from Canada. The Hart brothers from Calgary, Alberta. The Quebecers from Montreal. Tremendous anticipation by this capacity crowd. Now Jacques is having a... Uh, he wants to shake hands with Owen Hart. Extending the right hand in a uh, gesture of friendship, but you yes. know he's a liar. He'll stab you in the back with his left while he's shaking your hand with the right. Both men uh, basically circling here, yet to make contact, and now they do. Follow an elbow tie up and a shot with a rake to the eyes. Follows it with the right hand to the back of the head. Irish whip to the center of the ropes goes Owen Hart. Uh-oh. And he, uh, excuse me, Jock, lowered his head. He suplexed for his trouble. A short suplex by Owen Hart. Boy, he paid for it, paid for it dearly. The only thing right now that the Hearts have to worry about, as far as I can see, is Johnny Polo wandering around out there at ringside. Now, a quick drop kick by Owen Hart causes Jacques to fall on his hands and knees to Jacques' corner, where he will find a solace with uh, his partner Pierre and his manager, Johnny Polo. Well, we just got a few words of advice from. I don't know whether I'd heed anything that he says. Owen oh, got a kick there, and uh, Jock caught the foot. Owen on one leg, and Owen caught it. A big roundhouse, martial arts kick, goes to the lateral press. He has the leg hook. Oh, and we're half a count away from new tag team champions of the WWF. Tag oh. made. No, no, no. Did the tag go? Oh, no tag there. A little bit premature there on the cover, I thought. Tag made now. Back breaker by Owen. He made the tag with Rick. He came off the inside, second up the elbow. Crowd of press by the Hitman. Hitman got two out of it. But face lock. Inside cradle. Inside cradle by Owen. Brett the Hitman hard on shot. Boy, I thought he had him hooked up real good. Real Watch up. Comes that flip. Brett hard. Again, hitting predicament. And, uh, Another lateral press after the leg drop. 
at least a dozen so far, and this one just underway. Have they got something in mind? Yes. They want to become the next reigning WWF Tag Team Champions. Owen Tax Brett in one more time. Brett Rishlock, Irish whip, is reversed. Pierre trying to close line, but he missed. And Brett, oh, Brett was caught with a power slam. And it could be over. The big, almost 300-pound Pierre with a power slam. Got a near fall, and Pierre makes a tag to Shock. Shock, the veteran of this team, the leader of this tag champion duo. A concerned look right now on the face of the rocket, Owen Hart. Pierre is tucking the hitman, the tag, bet, tag rope, while the referee is on the far side of the ring with Owen, and the shock, shock diverted the referee's attention, and while he was over in the far corner, Pierre was tucking the hitman. Pierre tag rope trying to put the lights out for him. Jock with a kick to the midsection. Lateral press, and this time Jock got a near fall. Do you get the feeling, Jim Ross, that the pendulum has swung in this one? I do. Yeah, yeah the momentum is back in the corner of the champs. Double up. My fans chops by Jock and Pierre. Pierre, the legal man, and so is Brett. Get a crowd in the background chanting, go, Brent, go. They love the hitman. It is deafening here in the Providence Civic Center as the hitman is literally getting his clock clean here. Brent Hart laid over the second rope. Jock held him there. Pierre got ahead of steam and up 300 pounds right across his back. Jock in. There is a cover and a near fall. Boy, Brent Hart's in a lot of trouble here. Needs to make the tag with Brother Owen. Taking a pounding, taking a shellacking. Unlike the hearts, the Quebecers have cut the ring in half beautifully. Elbow drive by Shock, catching Brent coming off the ropes moments ago. The hitman in the front corner ring. Pierre trying to come off the top, but the Brent raised his foot, and Brent's foot caught Pierre right in the jaw. He may have bought himself some time. Well, the hitman looking for his own corner hasn't quite found it yet. In the meantime, Pierre looking to tag Jock back in and does. And Owen Hart gets the tag from his brother. Couple of drop kicks. Jock goes to the right, far side. He's elevated in the back body drop. Owen now sends Pierre far side, center of the ropes. Caught him with a beautiful belly to belly suplex. Owen Hart is on fire here. Certainly is. The double team got it. And now it's Owen who's in trouble. Jock tags Pierre. And now Owen Hart will have a gut check here. Will he be able to hold on as big 300 pound Pierre comes coming with those forearms and fists right to the back of his head. And now Pierre and Jock make another tag team exchange. A double team before they leave. Both men elevating oh. Owen right it to the top rope. Him out off the top rope with a cover by Jock and a half away from retaining the title. Where on earth did he find the energy to kick out of that one after being clotheslined from that high elevation move right on the top rope? The Beckers missed another clothesline and Owen came off and drop kicked both of the WWF Tag Champions down to the canvas and now can Owen make the tag to Big Brother Brett? He's near the corner. Oh, he got it. He made the tag. Still inside the ring. Side pressure next week. On the hitman, on shot. He's got Pierre up. A backbreaker. Oh, what a backbreaker. Red Hart is on fire, as we said. He is really cooking here. Well, referee doesn't see fit to put either Quebecer out, so the hitman is making a play. He rams her head 
match together. The WWF Tag Team Championship is just about out the window as far as the connectors are concerned. Oh, Brett came to the ropes and Polo separated the ropes. Bret Hart has gone through the second and third rope to the floor. And I, he's holding his knee, Gorilla. Came right down on that left knee, right on the patella. He might have dislocated it. Boy, he's just reeking in agony. Brett was going to use the ropes without a lot of momentum. Polo separated the ropes, and Brett came out on his knee. Still out on the concrete, the hitman. He's getting double teamed out there by the Quebecers. They're pulling Brett's leg. And here came Pierre, 300 pounds, right off the apron on his knee. I'll be very surprised if the hitman can even make it back into the ring, Jim Ross. He's hurt badly, ladies and gentlemen. Red Hart, has, his knee has been, it looks as if just about destroyed here. Red can even get up. He's in a, almost a fetal position on the outside. Both Quebecers are out there. I don't understand why the referee is not out there separating the Quebecers and getting them off the hitman. Referee predisposed right now, trying to keep the rock at Owen Hart from going to the aid of his brother. In the meantime, the Quebecers really doing a number on the hit back. Red Hart is screaming. He is in phenomenal pain, and he's a he's a target. And now that, that was a chair. Shot Penny with a chair. He's crawled to one corner, Pierre over, nailing Owen. And he goes Owen face first into the steel barricade. This match has gotten completely out of hand. Lost it, then lost control of this one. Owen trying to keep the Quebecers away from his brother. But I'm afraid the damage has already been done. The referee is counting. He's up to seven. He's up to eight. Owen gets up, stops the count. Red is on the outside of the floor. Owen is there. And, and now the referee, he didn't see that either. Polo had a, a putter, a golf putter. That's a one that Johnny Polo brought out there. And, and Jock used it on Red's knee, hit it several times. And they, now Jock is back in the ring, wants the referee to count Brett out. They know, the Quebecers know, the Hart brothers on this night are a better team. And oh, and now just rolling his brother in underneath that bottom rope. I'm not too sure that was a wise move. Well, he's going to get counted out. If not, maybe Brett can make the tag over. But in the meantime, Jock is stomping away without mercy on that knee. And now Jock tags in Pierre. Boy, that lane's in serious, serious trouble here. The pain threshold for the hitman, we know what that's like, but he may have just blown that knee out, Jim Ross. Yeah, he's holding it. And I tell you, this is a career-threatening situation for Brett the Hitman Hart. Another tag, Pierre, tagging in shot. And they stomp away. They have nothing on their mind but the stomp and the twist and the pull on that left knee of Red Hart. Jock has Red in a Boston Crab now. A, a, a half crab gorilla. Half crab going to work still on that left leg. Rocket comes in. Gales Jock buying a little time for the hitman, but oh, he's not even looking for his corner. Pierre came off the second rope from the inside with a leg drop to a to Red Hart who was lying on his stomach on the canvas, Fred is almost limp, and they're just, they're having a free game on this leg, and they have Brett in the center of the ring, maybe a shade toward their side of the ring, through the Quebecers, Jock is back in, Jock stretches the leg out, stops at it, Hitman has no defense right now, he's just in too much pain to do anything, and the referee better consider perhaps calling this match. Pierre came off the top to hit the leg, but he missed it. But Brett cannot get up. He can't even stand, folks. He's trying to crawl to his corner to tag Owen. He is in tremendous pain. Look at Brett is trying to 
to hook up Pierre in that sharpshooter from a pro position and turn it over. What a gutsy, gutsy hit man. Bret Hart is trying to put the sharpshooter on Pierre, but he can't do it. He got up to his feet, and his leg just buckled. Well, that's the leg that's paramount in the sharpshooter. The left leg, wait a minute now, the bell is wrong. Referee has stopped it, I think. Let's, let's get the official word. Let's go up to Howard Finkel and get the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Even though there has been no submission from Bret Hart, the official has elected to end this match. Therefore, the winners and still World Wrestling Federation Oh man, I tell you, what a bad, bad break for the Hart brothers. Brett is writhing in pain. Owen is arguing with a referee. Owen is trying to say if Brett could have got the tag, he would have had the opportunity at least, Gorilla, to, to maybe shake it loose, maybe hold on. But the Quebecers would not allow that. And I think the referee made a good call. Absolutely very sound call by the referee. Seeing what kind of pain the hitman was in. Wait a minute. Owen is irate and he's very upset, no doubt about it. Is he, he's having some, uh oh, Owen is having words with Brett. Brett is, can't even stand. He's holding his, he wants his brother to help him up. And Owen is berating, verbally berating his own flesh and blood here. Sticking his finger right in his kisser. I wish I could hear these comments. Brett this man can't get to his feet. Brett now near the ropes, trying to pull himself up, and his brother has yet to offer him a helping hand. Why doesn't he help him? This is very appalling. Owen is taunting his brother, Gorilla. I don't believe this. Owen Hart is taunting his own brother, Brett. Brett finally able to stand. He pulls himself up. Can't put any weight whatsoever on that left leg. And Owen is still in his face. And Brett's trying to explain. I didn't give it up. I, wait, oh, oh, no. Owen just, he just kicked his whole brother. He kicked him right in the knee. Oh, I can't believe this. Owen Hart has just kicked his whole brother in that damaged knee. Ladies and gentlemen, what a situation we have here. The Royal Rumble will continue. You're listening to Radio WWF. It's full of officials here attending uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. What a disgusting display by his own brother kicking him in the injured knee. Brett's going to have to have help getting out of there, ladies and gentlemen. And we will have more of the WWF Royal Rumble after this 60-second break from your local station. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Ross and Gorilla Monsoon here with you at the... Uh, WWF Royal Rumble. Let's go back in the locker room area. Todd Pettengill's talking to Owen Hart. Bret Hart, you're nothing but a selfish person. I went in there in a tag team match for the biggest match of my life. It was a dream come true. I thought I had the best partner in the world, my own brother. But you're too selfish, like I've said all along. Your ego is too big. You only worry about yourself, Brett. Bro, you don't Owen, care about me. Unbelievable in front of your entire family. I your don't family care about you. anybody. I was concerned about myself and my whole family. The biggest opportunity in my life. I had a chance, Brett, and you stripped it away from me. You took it away from me, Brett, because you're too selfish. All you had to do was just tag me. My hand was there. Just tag me. I knew your leg was bad. I was aware of that. Just tag me. But you're too selfish. You just want to put your sharpshooter on. I could have won the match. I don't need you with a bad leg doing it, Brett. You're too damn selfish. And that's why you're sitting there with a bad leg. And that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. Oh, and let me ask you something. You've obviously cost Brett a shot at the championship. There's no way he's going to be able to compete in the Royal Rumble match coming up tonight. Don't you think that was selfish on your part? There's no selfishness in me. There's not a selfish form in my body. He cost himself the WWF Tag Team belt, and he cost me, his little brother, a guy that's never had the taste of a WWF belt before. He's done it before. He doesn't care about me. He just worries about himself. I don't care about you in the Royal Rumble, Brett, because this is my opportunity. 
I'm in it too. I'm not worried about you getting cost the WWF belt.